um, we have seven programs that uh, each, you know, collaboratively coming together creates that system that helps the entrepreneur uh, from incentives to loans to collaborations with the banks to space that are um, to be leased at um, a very um, affordable rate, uh, yeah. but with intensive coaching consulting uh, yeah. that is free of charge so that the business can get that first help, that pivoting, the model, the, the testing, and then a maker space that is aimed, it's a public innovation center aimed for everyone, but may, mainly or specifically for entrepreneurs and small businesses to innovate and to create the prototypes that leads to um, mm -hmm. the density of innovation or the density of ideas uh, that can also create small businesses. Welcome to the Cooler Lifestyle Podcast. I'm your host, Matt Kuehlhorn, and I'm excited to have you join me as I interview community members and business leaders from the communities in which I live, work, and serve through my business cooler garage doors. We're gonna bring you highlights on characters in our communities. Why? Because community matters, and I wanna know more about who is behind our business and leadership in order to understand and support the community fabric that our relationships make up. And collectively, we can build stronger communities that support our lifestyles, our youth, and our health. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Cooler Lifestyle Podcast. I'm your host, Matt Kuehlhorn. Today, I'm sitting down with Delita Bollig. She is the CEO for the Business Incubator Center in Grand Junction. Delita, thank you so much for joining. Thank you, Matt. Thank you for having me. And you're beaming in from the Incubator Center right now, your office? Yes. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm right here at the Incubator Center. This is in Grand Junction in Orchard Mesa. Uh, yes. It's a very industrial setting uh, and uh, surrounded by 63 businesses. Yeah, uh, I love that. And before we hit record, you were talking a little bit about some of the context to, you mentioned Riverside Tech and the Incubator Explain that for the listeners, just so we have that clarity. Yes. So uh, RTC, which is uh, Riverview Technology Corporation, is uh, the other uh, organization that it's also a nonprofit that I'm heading. Uh, it is led by a separate board than the Business Incubator Center. It is the owner of the property. Um, the property was gifted by the Army Corps of Engineers to the city and the county. Uh, they hey. helped set up RTC. Uh, to maintain the property for uh, the benefit of economic development. So uh, we have two leases, uh, the Department of Energy and the Business Incubator Center from the RTC site. So operations, BIC, property, RTC. Gotcha. Cool. How long have you had your role there, Delita? Since last July, so almost a year. Right on. Awesome. All right, let's build a little context to the game. Where did you grow up? I'm from Sweden, hence the accent. Yes. Uh, and I've been in the U.S. 10 years. I'm trying to lose the accent. It's very tough. Why would you try <laughs> you to know, lose we, that? <laughs> well, because, you know, people keep asking, where are you from? And so yeah, I'm like, well, I've been here 10 years. I, I'm from here. But, yeah, gotcha. um, but I'm from Sweden. Uh, I grew up in Sweden in yeah, Vesteros, yeah. uh, which is about 45 minutes from Stockholm. Okay. Uh, it's a smaller city. Uh, I grew up on an island in the inland archipelago, so mm. even smaller than the city. Wow. Uh, going to the city was a treat. Uh, so um, um, really, the city of uh, Vesteros is the city where robotics shines in Sweden. Okay. Uh, we have uh, ABB, uh, the huge international robotics company uh, founded in Sweden, running operations in Sweden, where a lot of the innovation happens, a lot of the Scania, um, the innovative technologies for um, transportation happens in that city. It's a very industrial, it's a very business techie city. Yeah. Where did the journey start sparking your interest in business? Because I know we're going to geek out on this a little bit, but can you can you take me from, and I, I can't even try to say the pronunciation of your hometown, um, but... Give us a bit of a summary and, and how did this unfold for you to get to where we are today? So um, my family comes from a very entrepreneurial background. Uh, my dad's family has been uh, into trade and has been tradesmen uh, in Europe for several centuries. Uh, so since the early 1500s, um, they were 
running trade routes between Southeast Asia, India, the Middle East, uh, Africa, and Europe. Um, brought a lot of tea, spices, um, different textiles to Europe, um, created markets, right on. ports, um, collaborated with royal families and creating uh, the East India Company. So there's a lot of yeah, entrepreneurship but... there. Yes. Uh, and um, that kind of is something that is very normal growing up. Everyone has their business or knows someone starting a business. Uh, very interested in that. I wanted to go the bureaucratic way, uh, wanted to work for the Swedish government, started at, you know, studied political sciences, international relations, have um, multiple so programs, and, and uh, just went ahead and worked for the local uh, government. So started with the very basic city level and then uh, started working from there up on to uh, county, what, you know, district, and then sure. region, and then was picked up for missions for Sweden. Uh, and then also yeah. for oh, the high yeah, government. Yeah, so sure. <laughs> throughout my work life in Sweden, I worked primarily in government. Yeah. Uh, when I started working for the Ministry of Foreign yeah. Affairs, uh, uh, it was very you... much to promote business Sweden and businesses and entrepreneurship and innovation that's coming out from Sweden to the five regions in the world, uh, but also encourage other businesses to set up and, and start up in Sweden. So it was, you know, the cherry on the pie. Whenever we didn't have to do policy, we were right there talking to businesses and expansion and all of the the fun things that comes with uh, you know new countries, new policies, and and how do we get the Swedish model out in the world and and make sure that everyone can see things sustainably like we do in Sweden, which is yes, fairly yeah. different from the rest of Europe. So sure. so yeah, then fell in love, moved to the U.S., started my own business. Um, Simultaneously continued working for the Swedish government, was picked up for some missions for the Air Force, and this job came up, uh, and I applied, yeah, and yeah. here I am. Gotcha. Wild. Cool. <laughs> yeah, pretty wild. <laughs> Hey everybody, this is Luke from Cooler Garage Doors. Just want to take a quick second to talk about our sponsor, Sommer Garage Door Openers. In our opinion, Sommers are the highest quality product on the market today. We recommend them for all of our residential garage door installs because of the variety of features they include, such as Wi-Fi connectivity and safety features such as a fixed chain, which moves along a secure rail to ensure your garage door opens quietly and safely. Click on the link in the description to learn more about Sommer garage door openers. That's amazing. Okay. So Grand Junction wasn't necessarily on the map of like, I want to get there. But that Actually, came... it was. It was. Because my husband is from the West Coast Slope. Yes. So we've been visiting yes. Junction uh, three to four times every year throughout the um, 10 perfect. years that I've been in the U.S. Right uh, and while he was in the military, every time the military gives us time off, uh, we would be here visiting with his grandparents, cousins, uncles, aunts, family. It's, you know, this place is home and it's always felt like home. We've yeah. been wanting to move back. The pandemic kind of put things into perspective for us. We We've been well, looking at different places, uh, whether we want to continue being in uh, more of the south, let's see, southeast of the U.S. Uh, then we decided, you know what, well, with the pandemic doing what it did uh, to the world, <laughs> we wanted to be closer to family. So we were in, in talks. Do we get close to my family, move back to Sweden? Do we yeah, move yeah. to the West Coast Slope? When yeah, this sure. opportunity came up, it just made sense to be here. Yeah, that's beautiful. Seems like a great fit. What a, yeah. See, okay, let's talk about business yeah. because, you know, where I was going in my mind was like, man, like your background and your experience, like it's just right for this role at this time. Like, let's talk about the business environment in Grand Junction and from your perspective, what are you seeing? What are some of the current challenges, opportunities that are in front of us? Yes. So, so our area is rural, but not. Yes. And that always comes with a lot of pros, but also some cons. Which we one? are right there in the middle between Salt Lake and Denver. So we have a lot going for us. 
Uh, but that also means that we need to be nimble about the ways that we help small businesses grow sustainably so that the jobs that are created are viable. Because yes, we want to move away from the boom and bust in our industries. These are the things that have historically hurt our region the most and yeah. hurt the businesses here the most. And usually when that happens, you know, the bigger companies just pick up and move or the corporate offices decide to shut down a large plant. The small businesses and the ecosystem that is vendorship and your mom and pop shops and the networks around it, your your food service, the services, these are the small businesses that hurt the most because they stay here and they try to pick up where that big plant left. Yes. And you're kind of referencing and I'm certain you've done the historical work because the mining, the extraction, right? And gas, oil is big for, for Grand Junction, but we've seen it all along the West where it is real boom and bust. And we see the housing go with the boom. Like it just takes everything. Yep. And and that is why BIC uh, started up. Uh, the Business Incubator Center 37 years ago decided that this, this organization is needed as an economic development organization to help diversify the economy and help our population root to help our small businesses grow viably yeah. and sustainably. Um, by diversifying the economy, we also help create this ecosystem and have a stability for businesses and jobs right. Right. that helps our community grow and also age here. Um, yeah. Because we want to have enough opportunities for youth to stay. That can only happen if you have that vibrant ecosystem of small businesses, the innovative, the chances to open up something and and see results. Um, and so we see our organization at the heart of that work, uh, where we link arms with other organizations that do similar uh, economic development aspects of of economic development, and then also you know, state, city, county uh, entities, and try to help our population thrive. Um, by you know, small businesses need in the first five years the most help. Um, it's a very fragile time for most small businesses. You're you're setting out a lot of them bootstrap, but some of them use everything they have. You know, yeah. all of their savings. Yeah. Uh, in order to see the hurdles and be ahead of the hurdles, you need that organization that has that know-how. Uh, so we pride ourselves in being part of the community. We have people from the community, important members of the community, volunteering their time here, subject matter experts that come here and guide the entrepreneurs in every step of the way. Uh, and we do that free of charge, which is amazing. Uh, is and amazing. that's thanks to the way that we have built our organization and the sustainability in our operations. Yeah. So who is who is the focus? Is it for new businesses in that startup period? So yes, it is both the new business or the business that is seeing a transformational change. So say change in ownership or uh, exit, needing to exit, right. or a business right. that has been around for some time, but now is facing a hurdle and needs to either expand or go through you know, a pivoting moment of yes. that business. Um, we have seven programs that yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, each you know, collaboratively coming together creates that system that helps the entrepreneur. Yeah. Uh, from incentives to loans to collaborations with the banks to space that are um, to be leased at um, a very um, affordable rate, uh, but with intensive coaching consulting uh, that is free of charge so that the business can get that first help, that pivoting, the model, the the testing, and then a maker space that is and it's a public innovation center aimed for everyone, but may, mainly or specifically for entrepreneurs and small businesses to innovate and to create the prototypes that leads to um, mm -hmm. the density of innovation or the density of ideas uh, that can also create small businesses. Yeah. Um, and um, so incentives, loans, space, commercial kitchen, uh, and then co-working space, lease spaces, and then the Small Business Administration um, uh, Center, which is uh, a state program that is in partnership with the Business Incubator Center, uh, offers classes, workshops, su subject matter expertise through consulting uh, with small businesses. 
it's yes, very right. common for us to see a small business come through and go through each and every program and receive all the help they need. And sometimes right. they realize, okay, my idea is not ready yet. And they start mm. that pivoting model. Yes. Or it is a great idea and we are right there to help encourage them, push it out to our community. Yeah. So different businesses see different things. We see businesses in all their life cycle. Yeah, I love that. What do you see? So I love I love change. <laughs> and I and I could barely stay in there and change too long, but the certainly the the population is changing right now. We're seeing front range, bigger town folks moving into the western slope of Colorado. Um COVID changed almost everything. And we have technology in big plays. How is this impacting the way businesses? I mean, is it impacting how businesses start up and run? And what are you Absolutely. seeing there? I mean, you have small businesses now having the resources and the ways to work more efficiently by using new technologies. Mm -hmm. um, we have we host uh, at the makerspace the High Five Robotics. Uh, we are now seeing that they went from one team to four teams, uh, where you have children. Uh, wanting to get into that innovative atmosphere of creating. And automation is something that can be seen both positively and negatively. For small businesses, it's, you know, it's inevitable. Certain areas probably faster than others, but we can all benefit from certain aspects of innovation and automation. I think as long as we do it as viably and as sustainably as possible, where we are making sure that we are not encouraging another type of boom and bust for our region, where diversification is the aim and the goal, so that we have a healthy atmosphere of everything, where we have that change and that innovative and that you know robotics and the techie and the automation, and then also the services and the industries that need to exist in order, you know, your plumbers, your carpenters, your landscapers, that still will be needed I don't see any robot anytime soon kind of going out and, and painting, but maybe in the future. And why couldn't that, you know, very successful carpenter or painter in our region come up with that innovative idea and come and test it out here at the incubator and then find a method that can become, you know, as an example for a nationwide business. Uh, there's a lot of opportunity in change, and we are here to help make sure that it is as sustainable as possible. Yes. Yes. I agree with that. There's a lot of opportunity and change. It can be scary. For some, yes. Yeah. And we are also here to, to help others understand that change is inevitable and that opportunities, you know, are good yeah. for our region and specifically for our areas. Um, we pride ourselves in being agrarian. Uh, in Mesa County, 40% of our industry is, um, you know, um, ranching, farming. Uh, and so, Yes, we do have the manufacturing, but maybe if we walk hand in hand with innovation, that can also transfer to new young generations that want to do these jobs in maybe more innovative ways. Yes, yes, love that. Are there resources for the businesses that have been around for decades? Maybe there's a mature business owner that's ready to exit, but hasn't really thought about it. Like, is that available? Can they get some assistance and start mapping out how do we do this? And Yes. So we would be able to help with consulting and coaching uh, in creation of an exit plan or uh, if they need a review of their financials or uh, a, a deeper dive with them where they learn how to do their cash flow projections or how to build their model for an exit model. Uh, we can help them with that. However, our spaces, our leased spaces for businesses is aimed for businesses that are either startups and new or a business that is pivoting their model or a, a change. So if that person sold the business and there's a new owner to that business, they're welcome to the space. However, if they are just building an exit plan, they're welcome to the coaching consulting, to the incentive part of things, to creating prototypes, to accessing the loan fund, but not necessarily space that is aimed for startups. Yeah, beautiful. When you're looking at business, so it'd be a little bit of a loaded question, Delita. When you're looking at 
businesses and you see those successful startups, do you see them? Do you see them in the personality traits of the individual that walks in, or is it only recognizable years as they go along? And what might those be? Does that make sense? Loaded. Um, <laughs> well, I mean, you're a small business owner. That's uh, right. Every small business carries the personality of its owner to a degree. Uh, most small businesses evolve and grow. Uh, you know, what you start up with may not be the end product or the, you know, what your market starts yeah. up with may not be the market that your business actually grows into. So there's a lot of yeah. um, opportunity to, to see a business as an evolving model. It doesn't really help for an entrepreneur to just be, this is the only model that works. And most entrepreneurs are used to that. They are, yeah. they are very... Um, pragmatic, uh, they take change into open arms and want to see some sort of evolving. That's the cool thing about entrepreneurs. Uh, it's a it's a type of personality that can do it. That can go out and say, you know, it's not being done before, but I'm gonna give it my best shot and try. And you know, maybe I'll fail. A lot of them do fail, but then with failure comes other opportunities and successes. And so, being able to adapt to that takes a certain type of personality. Yeah, sure. Did I, I answer your question? No, I agree with that. And what I'm hearing is, yeah, there's a certain personality trait for somebody to be able to take on the risks and keep going day by day, right? And Yes. We do uh, tell a lot of people, believe it or not, that they are not ready, that yeah. their ideas are not viable, or uh, we guide them or try to make them see <laughs> Uh, if they have, a, say, a very, very crazy idea uh, that, hey, this is very innovative, maybe there isn't a market for it yet, it's going to be an uphill battle, you're going to have to create the market. So we're we're not here to what? just tell everyone, hey, absolutely, let's bring a, go risk everything. We're here to make sure that the, the risks that are taken are taken in a, in a way that brings back the most profit possible for the business owner but also for our region, the yes, most yes. jobs possible, and yes. those jobs need to be sustainable so that we can retain yes. and the creation of jobs can stay yes. in place. And then that the dollar formation that we're helping the small business create to our community is something okay. that can last. So that is our mission within economic development, um, job creation and retention and dollar formation, but also with small businesses yes. that we can help innovative ideas say if a company comes in here and they have a software and I'm not necessarily a software engineer, so I'm not, I don't understand the innovation behind it. And if they are able to explain it yeah. in a way to everyone and convince the buyer, we are here to help them. But even if we don't understand the system, if we believe that, hey, we can get you that subject matter expert that can help you and guide you. Yeah. And if, if that is a viable idea, We'll, we'll push you forward. If it's not, let's take it back to the shop and work on that idea and make sure that whatever you risk you're putting in it is actually sustainable. Yeah. So that is, it's a process and it's, you can see the results of businesses that we've helped in our community. You know, right now we've helped them 10, 15 years ago. Every year when we uh, announce our annual report, we're so proud of our results of the contribution that we contribute to our community. And um, we know that the businesses that we help start up now, we will see the most impact within the next decade. Yes, I love that. And I love the perspective because it is about the greater community. Like there is, um, you know, for me, where this whole venture is the mission to strengthen community. And we can do that and make a, a profit. And there's that responsibility of paying well, having the, you know, the lifestyle taking care of multiple people that just ripples into the families, that ripples into the community yes. and it goes forever. <laughs> yes. So exactly. I love that. I think, I think you, you hit it right on the spot. A lot of people think that it is just a business and that it is a, a model that, you know, cash flow and, and whatnot. In reality, it is building communities. Yes, yes. We are helping create an ecosystem where people can stay here. 
these are families that then contribute to other small businesses. That's right. Uh, they have their kids go to schools here. They purchase things. They they shop around. They support our community in ways that are you know beyond imagination. The amount of volunteering that happens, the amount of contribution that each family that stays here and opens their business contributes to the community, is you know you can't just calculate that and just the process of, hey, we help this business become viable, and then that's that. We pride ourselves in being community players, and luckily we have a great city and great leaders within the city and the county and the state that wants to see small businesses thrive, your mom and pop shop. And I think the pandemic put a lot of things into perspective for a lot of us where we realize that this is the ecosystem that is the most fragile and needs the most support. But we are also here, if we lose that, our communities fall apart. Yeah. So we are we are very much aware of, of that. And it is it is something that we carry forth seriously, uh, that we need to make sure that our communities are are there. They have the tools and the resources they need so that they continue thriving. And that means thriving, you know, this year, next year, five years from now, and 10 years from now, and then constantly evolving into what needs to happen. Yeah. Um, so change is inevitable. That's that's absolutely correct. But also, pivoting models is is essential. Yeah, I agree with that. What uh, what are we excited for? What do you see coming down the pipe? That's um, so right now. I'm really excited about the track that we started here in collaboration with Mesa County uh, Behavioral Health. Uh, we have started uh, a support track for nonprofits uh, because we believe nonprofits create an impact on our community just as much as small businesses. Yes, they do. A lot of times nonprofits, smaller ones, have difficulty in in growing their models and looking at their models as a business model. Uh, so they have very few teams. They wear too many hats. They try to do it all. And they live through what we call cycle starvation, grant cycle starvation. Um, we started this uh, track here. It's uh, it's an eight-week um uh, one, uh, uh, it's an eight-week workshop um, model classes where we help nonprofits, smaller ones within resource agencies, uh, know how to build a business plan, know how to uh, project their uh, profits or cash flow, know how to invest in their model and hire people for the right positions and not live through cycles of start, uh, grants, but actually build up for uh, a growth plan. And, uh, and credentialing and how to use the resources available to them within the, the state and the, and the federal government. And, and with that, we are hoping that our, it continues into one-on-one. We're hoping that we build yeah. a system boom, boom. that is solid for our nonprofits, just mm -hmm. like the system we built for our small mm -hmm. businesses, right. so that we have a holistic idea of how to help everyone in our community, be it through a nonprofit or for profit. Yes. What I really love about that, Delita, and I come from 20 years in the nonprofit sector, is now that I'm in for profit, you know, I see both <laughs> models and there's a lot of similarities. And yes. yet we can think about them and then oftentimes <laughs> they get ran like they're not. Yes. It's a business at the end of the day. It's exactly there's right. Some different nuts and bolts that go into every business <laughs> and nonprofits. To, again, we talked about these ripples and men, they create like massive ripples. Yes. And so I love the support of, of them. I think that there's a lot of opportunity there. And um, yeah, I just wanted to mention that because I think that there can be a construct like it's nonprofit, it's all full of heart, let's just go serve. And yet it's a business. Like, yeah, let's drive the business along just yeah. because it's stated nonprofit doesn't mean it can't profit. Like, yeah. So that's absolutely awesome. right. And, and the, the aim with this model is to build capacity, is to help our community by creating more opportunities for job creation within the nonprofit sector, but also the for-profit sector. By building capacity and helping the nonprofits grow, we are actually increasing opportunities in our community so that people can choose which track they want to go into, but also not lose opportunities and, and feel like I'm only, you know, there for the mission, but I can't really make a living. We want people to to make a living. We want them to be able to root and, and want to be here. 
and and B if they work for a nonprofit or for a for profit. So we don't want the the you know pendulum to be skewed towards the for profits. Although we want everyone to see their business as a business model, be it impact organizations or you know impact organizations business wise. <laughs> So we are a team of experts here. We you can reach out to us at djincubator.org or call us. Uh, we are here five days a week. Uh, we have uh, a large interprogrammatic giving, workshops, classes. Uh, we do our coaching consulting is free, most of the classes. We do have grants. Uh, if someone needs to go through a workshop and they cannot afford, we do have grants to cover uh, certain costs. So. Don't be shy. We are here. Our mission is to help our community uh, and build economic development for our community. So don't be shy. We're here to help. Would that be like if somebody has a really crazy idea? Not like I want to encourage those folks to come talk to you and at least yes. get a reality check, if not like the cheerleading, right? Like, yes, we need well, you. Well, so we hear it all. Right now, we have sixty-three businesses on premise on campus. We have forty-nine acres of property and uh, 63 businesses. We have a manufacturing building, we have a services building, we have a technology building and a trainings building. Uh, and we have a commercial kitchen. Uh, a lot of our programs are in partnership with the city, the state, the, the county. Uh, so we're really lucky to have this robust support system around our entrepreneurs. Uh, but we also help entrepreneurs that are out in our mm. community, not necessarily needing this space. So a lot of times I would say it's 50-50. Yeah. Uh, with people coming to us and they already have a brick and mortar and they want to expand or they want to pivot or they want to, to, uh, you know, they need some funding, they need some some help within certain things. Uh, a lot of times we meet with them, we help them. These are the, com uh, the, the players in our community that usually give back to our community because they remain and they are constant out there trying to help our community grow. Yeah, I love it. Well, I really appreciate... Um your team and what you offer. I love the collaboration that I've seen with the GJ Chamber and Candace and GJEP with the Economic Partnership and Curtis. Yes. And Thank you. I think that that is incredibly powerful. So kudos to you and, and all of the players in there. We will include your um, website link in our show notes, Salida. And man, if you're listening and you know, have an idea or have that stir in the belly or the heart, like go check in on the resources at Big. I think there's a lot there and it's an amazing community asset. So thank you so much. Thank you, Matt. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for listening to the Cooler Lifestyle Podcast. We count on your subscriptions, your likes, your shares, and I encourage you to do that now. If you're watching on YouTube, go ahead and subscribe, lower right hand button, if you're on audio, download this, share it, and we look forward to having you on the next one.